Hi guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics. In this video, I am going to talk about PCL, the ligament of the knee joint. Let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about PCL, its attachments, parts that is the anterior lateral band and posterior medial band, primary restraint and secondary restraint. We will also discuss the active structures that prevent and cause posterior translation of the tibia and their application in designing the treatment. PCL is attached lateral to the medial condyle, so these are the two condyles. This is the medial condyle and it is attached lateral to the medial condyle and distally it is attached to posterior tibial spine. So between the tibia there is a spine and the posterior part of the spine is where the attachment of PCL is. PCL has a very large cross sectional area and in fact it is the largest and strongest ligament in the knee joint. Coming to the parts of the PCL ligament. It has anterior lateral band and posterior medial band. If you remember ACL, ACL had anterior medial band and posterior lateral band. So ALB, what it does is it becomes taut during flexion. That is at 80 to 90 degree of flexion. Whereas posterior medial band, that is PMB, becomes taut at extension. The primary restraint provided by PCL ligament is posterior translation. It absorbs 93% of the load when knee is in hyperextension or total extension. PCL also prevents posterior translation when knee is flexed and maximum posterior translation of the tibia occurs at 75 to 90 degree of flexion. So from this we know that PCL is effective at preventing posterior translation at greater degree of flexion that is in deep flexion. Now going to the secondary restraint, it also prevents virus and valgus forces and resists medial rotation at 90 degree of knee flexion. But it resists medial rotation less in extension. It does not resist any lateral rotation forces. So to demonstrate this, I'll again take my model. So if you see, this is the femur, tibia and this is the PCL ligament. It is attached on the lateral side of the medial condyle and posteriorly to the tibial spine. So if you see it prevents posterior translation. Posterior translation would be tibia going behind. So if I try to take my tibia back, it prevents that. It also prevents valgus and varus stresses and also medial rotation but not as much as lateral rotation. So now that we know the attachments and primary and secondary restraint of the PCL ligament. Let us go to the active structures which prevent posterior translation and also cause posterior translation. So to begin with, the enemy of PCL is hamstring and gastrocnemius. These are the muscles which cause posterior translation of the tibia. Whereas friend of PCL are popliteus muscle and quadriceps which cause anterior translation. So understanding hamstrings and quadriceps is pretty easy. So this is the quadriceps and when quadriceps contracts the tibia moves forward and due to the concave convex rule when there is concave surface moving on a convex surface the glide and the roll will be in the same direction. Whereas when hamstring is working it's exactly the opposite the tibia will be moving posteriorly. Hence quadriceps is a friend or it causes anterior translation and hamstring is an enemy or it causes posterior translation hence straining the ligament. Then we go to gastronemius. So gastronemius is quite confusing because in ACL we saw that gastronemius causes anterior translation. So hence if you think for PCL it should be a friend because it causes anterior translation just like quadriceps. But over here it comes under the enemy or it causes posterior translation and I'll explain exactly why. So we come over here. So if as you can see when the gastrocnemius contracts over here 
the muscle bulk will increase and it will push the tibia forward this will cause anterior translation of the tibia now we come over here so over here gastrocnemius is attached to the femur and when there is flexion occurring gastrocnemius will help in the flexion of the knee joint and when there is flexion there will be also posterior translation just like hamstrings over here and hence it will put strain on the pcl so over here gastrocnemius when contracted or stretched can cause anterior translation at the knee joint and also it can cause posterior translation at the knee joint during the flexion of the knee joint so now that we know that gastrocnemius causes both of them let us move on to the mechanism of injury pcl is most often injured in dashboard injury where there is a blow on the tibia and it moves posteriorly other type of injury is the hyperflexion injury where the knee goes into hyperflexion and with the hyperflexion there is posterior translation and that's how the pcl gets injured now coming to the application of these things so the first thing we should remember is knee flexion exercises so since the pcl is injured and we are comparatively keeping the knee immobilized we still need to work on the range of motion of the knee and hence we need to flex the knee so knee flexion exercises are important but very important thing over here is it shouldn't be active because when you are doing active knee flexion hamstrings will be activated and hence as it causes posterior translation it will strain the pcl and active hamstring flexion exercises should be avoided another point i would like to make is squatting do not flex the knee past 70 degree this is very important flexion past 70 degree should be avoided that is again because when there is excessive flexion there will be posterior translation of the tibia and will cause stress on the pcl you should also avoid hyper extension as it causes both acl and pcl strain as we learned a while ago that pcl takes up lot of stress there is 93% of the stress in hyper extension position hence hyper extension should be avoided at all costs also we need to keep our leg supported all the time that is if this is the bed we need to keep our leg like this and not like this because if we keep our leg flexed the gravity will act on the tibia and cause posterior translation over here right down and can cause stress on the posterior cruciate ligament now to summarize we talked about attachment of the posterior cruciate ligament we also discussed its primary and secondary restraint then we went to the active structures which cause and prevent posterior translation of the tibia and we also discussed mechanism of injury of pcl then under application we talked about the basic treatment and do's and don'ts of pcl injury if you like my content please share it with your friends don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover thank you for watching i'm